Let's look at dropshipping as a business model for making money online. So this is one of the business models I've researched extensively, but never pulled the trigger on. And I have some very specific reasons for that, but it doesn't mean that it's not the right business opportunity for you. So I'm going to go through some good and some bad things here. Um, it's, it's to answer the question, what's the best online business model? But without knowing anything about your situation, I'm not able to give you a good answer. And, and the answer will always be, it depends. It's sort of how long is a piece of string. So in this video, I'm, I'm trying to give you a nuanced look here at drop shipping. A business can be defined as finding an audience serving them a product and then getting paid. And in this case, it actually spreads out over the complete spectrum. You both have to find the customers, you have to source a product and you are getting paid. And that's one of the reasons why I've opted not to start a business model around this, because for me, there's too many moving parts, but let's have a look and, and dive in. So. For some of the strength for this business model, it's going to assume that you know what dropshipping is, otherwise you might not have come so far in this video. But if you don't, please let me know in the comment section and I'll uh, try to, to make an explainer video for you. But let's uh, dive in and look at some of the strengths first. So there's quite a lot, quite low overhead here. So you don't have to have a lot of money to get this business opportunity started. You might need some money to grow, but you can also earn money while you do that. You might grow slower, but, but you, you don't have to have a lot of money invested in this strategy and you don't have a lot of inventory that you need to pay beforehand. There is a fair amount of flexibility in this uh, business model. You uh, advertise a product and you get paid and if you don't advertise or if your shop is not running, you don't have to work in your business. You can sort of automate some of this stuff as well. So uh, it gives you a flexibility and you don't have to be present on site to uh, ship the products. So you can do this basically from anywhere. It is fairly easy to entry into this kind of model. You basically need to, to know some stuff. You know the basics of the model and, and you need to be able to ship the first products. You don't have to know everything about Facebook ads before you, you start. You, you can source your first product and then be off to the, to the races. Also, you have the opportunity to scale this quite big. So you don't have to, but you can uh, start with one product and then add another and another, and you can scale into different niches as well. So the, the, the possibility here is virtually endless and, and uh, you can scale this uh, fairly big, as I said. Some of the weaknesses is that you don't have too much control over the supply chain. So you are reliant on someone else delivering the product to your customer and the customer has the contact to you, but you, you outsource uh, the delivery and the production of the product and you don't basically have any control over that. So that is a, a challenge if there's uh, at some point it will be another pandemic or if the the political tensions will increase and there will be some trade restrictions uh, with some of the countries that you 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 buy these type of products for from and you don't have any real control over that some of the products and i'm guessing the products that you will start with in the beginning they will have quite low profit margins of course, there will be products with a higher profit margins, but uh, as in many businesses, the, the best products are uh, taken by the more experienced people in the business. So that is not to say that you can't break into that type of product with a high profit margin, but it's not likely that you will do that in the beginning. 
but you can start with low prof profit margins and increase your skills and, and work your way up from there. And then you have limited branding opportunities. So you can, of course, make an online shop that is brandable. And I don't know if you remember, but there was at one point a company called Wish and they were sort of branded with these type of inexpensive products. But also here in Denmark anyway, they were branded sort of now now we know that if you want some some cheap rubbish that will break the first time you use it you should buy from some from from wish and that is <laughs> basically the brand they have built here and i'm guessing that is not why you are into online business is is that you want to build that type of brand you can of course uh, source white label products and put your own branding on it and that is in my mind moving into a different type of online business and moving a bit a bit away from drop shipping all in all you are uh, mostly running a, a fairly anonymous, anonymous uh, shop online and running ads to people who on, uh, don't know you too well and probably won't come back for another product uh, of the similar kind uh, later. So if branding is important to you, this is one of the bigger disadvantages of this model. One of the opportunities is also that you have of the possibility to diversify, as I said, into many different business models. So you can start with one product in one niche and you can uh, then uh, take another product in another niche. So if you want to sell pool chemicals one day and then uh, sell tech stuff the other day and then the next day again you want to sell fitted toys, you, you have the possibility to do that. And that is also why you can scale this quite big is that you can have multiple verticals. So if you start an online shop and e-commerce website, you would uh, probably need to know a little, bo little more about the products that you're selling and you would need to build a relationship with your supplier. And doing that in multiple niches will become difficult and, and maybe not sustainable. So, but you don't have that issue here with dropshipping and you can just pick and choose and you can maybe start 10 of them and see what works best. So that is an opportunity for you. You also have basically the whole world as potential customers. Of course, some countries will work better for you than others and as i understand it western countries tend to do better in in selling cheap stuff we don't need but um, that might be a discussion for another day but you uh, in theory anyway have the possibility to sell to the whole world so if one market closes and you don't you, you're not able or you're not allowed to sell to that market you will have a, a possibility to expand into different parts of the world some of the threats here that you don't have direct control over is that there could be an increase of competition so with people wanting to uh, work from home more, there will be an increased, uh, increased competition. And that will be true for most online businesses. Uh, but the, the low barrier to entry here will invite more competition. Of course, the better ones, the, the ones that do this well, will rise to the top and will have the possibility to earn quite a lot of money. But getting to that point uh, will take some time and some learning. There can be changes in customer demand. So if you drop ship cheap products that are fitted toys or the fat of the week, next week it will be something different. That is also opportunity as well because you can act quickly on products that is not otherwise difficult to sell in an online or in an e-commerce store. But uh, if people for some reason decide that this is not an interesting product more anymore, then you will uh, have a, a dead business model. So. If you remember at some point like uh, five, ten years ago, we all wanted fidget spinners and suddenly we didn't anymore. And you, if you look at Google Trends for that, it is quite obvious that the, the interest f uh, fell off a cliff. So you could still buy them online, but the demand 
uh, is, is not in there anymore. Your suppliers can change policies on you from one day to the next. And if you're not a big customer with them, you don't have any control over that as well. So the threats are that the, the suppliers and the supply chain can uh, basically change the model and then uh, destroy your complete business. And then one of the more important ones in my mind is also piggybacking on the, the branding side of things that uh, if people have uh, been scammed with this uh, type of products before, they are less likely to buy this type of product again. And even though I'm guessing you want to do everything the right way and do it legally, um, you will be put in the same category in people's minds as the, the ones that are not, not doing things the right way. Uh, so you will be lumped together with scammers and fraud and you would have to work harder in this model than in other models to, to show that you are the real thing. And now we, we will look at some of the metrics. If you don't want to uh, write everything down here, I've put this on an article on the website and you can click in the link in the description below and, and you will find the article there. So for money, you will be able to scale this very big. If you're likely to do that is, is another question and you will start very small. So you will start with pennies, but uh, as I've talked about with the diversification and the scalability, you will be able to, to scale this in six, seven, maybe even, even eight figures here. But then you will also lose some of the passiveness. So in the beginning, you will probably be very hands-on and this will not be passive at all. So an order comes in and you might even be needing to copy paste the information from the order email to, to the supplier and then transferring money by hand or digital, digitally by hand, but you get the point. This, um, and then as you scale, you will be able to set up some automations um, along the way, uh, that also requires some skill, which is, is my net next point. But when you scale this business, you will be able to to do this more and more passive, and and you will be able to set up ads that run by themselves, and then will create this perpetual income for you that you don't have to work hours for money to get. So if you scale beyond that point, you will probably need to have some people working for you. And then of course you will lose some of the passiveness again. But for most people in the beginning, it will uh, be hours for money and then you will be able to increase the passiveness, but you will never be completely hands off with this type of business. And then for the skills. So you would need to, or maybe, Maybe not uh, you would need to because I'm guessing you could actually take one product and then sell it to your own friends on your own Facebook page and that be it. And if you have an Instagram following, you could, you could sell one product there and you don't have to set up much to do that. But for most people, <laughs> you will need to set up some sort of uh, online store. And if, if you haven't worked with WordPress or with Shopify before, you would need to learn some of the basic skills to, to set that up. Also, you would need to uh, know where to find suppliers. And when you grow this business, you will need to learn how to integrate all of these things so you don't have to copy and paste the 10 orders every hour to, uh, to get this to work. So you would need to learn something from the beginning. And as you grow, you would need to learn quite a lot of more, quite a lot more. So this is not a beginner friendly business model. You will need to learn something. Not that that is a bad thing necessarily, but it's, it's not beginner friendly. And then how long will it take to, for you to earn the first money? And mm, probably not long. As we, I, I usually compare this to the blogging space where you would have to have a, a website half a year, whole year, maybe two years before it, it earns any decent money. You will um, 
probably be able to earn money with the first product that you sell. Maybe not a lot of money because of low because the, the low profit margins, but um, you will be paid sort of uh, straight away. So if you want to earn quite a lot of money, you would need to build your skills around this. And that will, of course, take some time and depend on, on you and how well you learn and how quickly and hard you work on it. But it's definitely not as long a wait as it would be with blogging. So it, the, if I have to rate it on the scale here, it, it's closer to uh, getting paid straight away. So I hope this was helpful to you and that gave you a bit of nuance. If you want to see other videos where I break down online business models, you should look at the playlist. And there will be coming more videos like this out. And if, if that's something for you, you should subscribe to the channel. Till next time, take care.